Hi guys, this is Beeman and here's the second part of the Yamatai Castle Guide. In this video I'll show you how to turn this castle into a game ready player base. If you like to keep your respawn point and crafting stations close to the entrance, want to turn your castle into a public space for other players on your server, or just want to roleplay as someone else than a lord, then consider turning one of the towers next to the gate into a functional home. I have divided the whole tower into floors two tiles high, except for the lowest level of the basement, for which my only consideration was that the floor completely covers the terrain below. The towers of Japanese castles were built mostly out of wood, so I've decided to use frontier tiles for the floor and for the sake of cohesion, also for the stairs and fences. The interesting thing about Japanese castles is the contrast between the exterior and the interior. On the outside they are beautifully decorated, awe-inspiring structures dominating the landscape. On the other hand, inside they were minimalistic, spartan and most of all utilitarian. The interiors were made up by masterfully joined timbers holding up the construction, extremely steep stairs and rooms created by placing temporary walls as needed. The space near the outer walls formed a passage around the whole building and functioned like a battlement. To make the player quarters look noticeably different from the typical western interiors I've decided to try and incorporate a few features prominent in traditional Japanese homes and refrain from using western furniture like chairs and beds. First on the list is the Tokonoma. It is an alcove with slightly raised floor decorated with a hanging scroll and some small art object or flower arrangement. It is customary to sit the honored guest in front of the tokonoma, facing the room so that he cannot see it. If that's confusing to you, consider that modesty was a valued trait and sitting the guest with the tokonoma in view might be considered showing off or flaunting one's wealth. With that in mind, I placed the low table and cushions for sitting in front of it. These are mod items and work just like regular bed. So that's the first gameplay requirement done. I've got a respawn point. Designing personal space is crucial yet often overlooked aspect of character creation. By carefully choosing and placing various objects you can imply certain things about the occupant and change how the viewers perceive him. Owner of this room is one of the soldiers in the castle. This simple statement carries a lot of assumptions. So, I've placed a musical instrument, a flower vase, religious figure and a scroll of poetry or maybe philosophy in his private space to soften that image. There are a million ways to subtly suggest character traits, and it's done all the time, especially in movies due to time constraints preventing any real character development. Anyway, I could talk for hours about this, but that's not the point of this video. So, back to building. For this floor I've decided to use decorative beams, both vertical and diagonal, to show the inner structure of the building and suggest where temporary walls could be placed should they be needed. I'm placing all the objects in the middle. The outermost row of floor tiles should be empty. This requires a bit of imagination. Like I said in part 1, this design is influenced by ever-growing use of firearms which simply cannot be translated into melee-oriented game like Conan Exiles. Anyway, the outer walls would be pierced by numerous gun and arrow loops, while some walls, often corners, would have the Ishi Otoshi, or the stone droppers, built into them. This functioned in a similar manner to European machiculations, but were smaller, very subtle and placed only over critical spots. This room is directly above my respawn point, so it's the perfect place for entertainer. But exotic dancer would look really out of place here, so I've hidden the dancer among the soldiers playing the Chouhan, which is a traditional Japanese dice game. It's very simple. Two dice are placed in a cup, shaken, then placed on the floor with the cup upside down. The players bet on whether the sum of both rolled numbers is even or odd. To finish my low profile hole, I've placed a number of basic crafting stations in the basement. This is purely gameplay area, 
no decorations, no clutter, just some storage chests. The rest of the castle can be turned into short space for your clan or even a public area filled with NPCs for all the players on your server to enjoy. Okay, let's be serious. Nobody would build a huge castle to roleplay a servant, so it's time to move on to the main keep. The gameplay requirements are exactly the same. I still need a respawn point, entertainer to remove corruption and crafting stations to make and maintain my gear. The difference is that now I have a lot more space to decorate, but nothing's free. The main drawback of this design is that it requires a lot of running around and that might become tedious after some time. That's the first part of the equation. The other one is staying consistent with the theme. As far as the Lord's accommodation and reception rooms are considered, the Japanese castles were just like their European counterparts. In some castles they were placed inside the main keep. In others, a special building called the Yashuki, the mansion or palace, was built somewhere on the castle grounds. The truth is simple. A castle is primarily a military base. The administrative and representative functions were at best secondary considerations until the stability and peace were restored at the end of the Sengoku period. The end result is a compromise. I've decided to build a reception room on the keep's ground level, a private chamber above it, and utilize baileys for the crafting to limit the amount of running around required. Basic idea is, if I die and respawn, I can fix my gear and grab some food on the way out. And, when returning to the castle, I can offload crafting materials as soon as I pass the first set of gates. General layout of each floor is similar to the first tower, a corridor encircling a single room in the middle. I've covered the wooden floor of the reception room with carpets as a substitute for traditional tatami mats and divided it into two tiers so that the lord still towers above everyone else, even though everybody sits on the floor. The higher floor is constructed from stage tiles, which were added in the debaucheries of their Keto DLC. Furniture and decorations are mostly from Kitan DLC, but some items are modded. As usual, my full mod list is in the description. I realize that this is not an option for at least some of you, so I'm trying to limit my mod use to decoration only. This place, apart from the gates which can be easily replaced, can be built using only vanilla and DLC blocks. One of the biggest problems you'll encounter in a mod-free game is placing NPCs. I'm using PP admin panel to create and place various NPCs around my bases. They are great as I can pose them, equip them, and they are neutral towards other players and can't be killed. Also, Pippi comes with a simple scripting tool to create dialogue and quests so they can function as a true NPCs and not just a decoration. Anyway, let me know in the comments what's your opinion on mod use and if you'd be interested in mod-free content. Since this is meant to be a somewhat public space for role-playing, I avoid placing decorations in the middle. Both NPCs and furniture are off to the sides. Basically, think of it as a stage in a theater. There should be enough props and decorations to make the place feel real, but it's the players who should take the spotlight. On the other hand, if you've chosen the low-profile player home, you can add more NPCs here. A lord and his retainers on the top tier could be quest givers, while the lower area is left empty for visiting players. Above the reception room I've placed the lord's private chamber. This is basically a scaled up version of the tiny room I've built in the first tower with just some minor changes. Since there's plenty of space I've placed entertainer inside, this time disguising her as a musician so that I can start clearing corruption as soon as I respawn. The little square pillow is mod item and allows respawning at its position. Obviously place a regular bed here if you cannot use mods. Then there's the tokonoma and few other items and even though the room is quite large, I'm not placing a lot of stuff here to preserve the minimalistic vibe of the interior. For the personal armory I've chosen a variety of weapons associated with the samurai. First the Japanese longbow, a unique weapon that betrays the origin of the samurai, who were first and foremost mounted archers. 
What's special about this weapon is the way its shape changed to accommodate the awkwardness of shooting from horseback. Unlike the short recurve bows of other cultures, the Japanese created an extremely asymmetrical longbow to deal with the issue. The lower limb is more or less a third of the overall length, which allows the user to keep the whole thing above the horse's body and freely draw the string. Horse archery became a thing in Japan around 4th century common era, and still practiced today. If you'd like to learn more about it, or just watch it, search for Yabusame right here on YouTube. Then there's the Naginata. Although in game it's classified as two-handed spear, it's actually more like a glaive, a short single-edged blade mounted on a shaft of varying length. In modern martial art practice, the Naginata is around 220 cm or 7 feet long. Naginata was a very efficient battlefield weapon and was a common sight in the first centuries of the second millennium, its usage growing as a reaction to more prominent role of cavalry. Traditionally, Naginata is associated with Onna Bugeisha, the warrior woman. They were girls from noble families who trained in martial arts and fought alongside men throughout Japan's history. Heike Monogatari, a 14th century epic, describes one. Tomoe Gozen, as a beautiful, pale woman, master fencer, gifted archer, and fearless warrior. Finally, there are the two swords. These are probably the most iconic weapons of the samurai, because pop culture samurai are based roughly on late Sengoku and Edo Japan. Around the shift between those two periods, laws were passed in order to solidify the class structure of Japan's society and preserve the rule of the shogun. Among those were numerous regulations regarding weapons, including the right to carry two swords for samurai only. Basically, the rulers had to control the society. Lower classes were disarmed by the katanagari, or sword hands, or mass confiscations of weapons to prevent uprisings, and the lords were kept in check by taking hostages. Toyotomi Hideyoshi required that lords left their immediate family in Osaka while later, during the Tokugawa shokunate, the Sankin Kotai policy was introduced, which required the lords to spend one year in their domains and one in Edo, while their wives and children had to live in the capital the entire time. Anyway, back to our castle. The baileys were nothing special, just crafting stations and clutter in between. But all those animated thralls make the bailey feel busy and alive. Sure. Crafting stations can be placed in the basements, or one of the towers may be dedicated to workshop, but that will require more running around the castle every time they are needed, which in time will become a bother. I've decided to use the secondary keep as a temple. After all, as long as you haven't chosen Chrome, that's one more gameplay requirement to fulfill. Since the shrine is quite large, instead of a second floor, I've made a simple gallery. Then I've placed beams, just like in previous towers, to create the illusion of internal structure. By that I mean it's decorative and not load-bearing. Unlike pillars, the beams provide no stability as far as I know. The beams go quite nicely with both the frontier tiles, floors, stairs and fences, and the Yamatai walls, giving me a nice interior dominated by wood with some variation in shade. Also, that was one of the reasons I've chosen the Derketo Shrine, the color palette meshes well with the building. Of course, choose whichever religion you want, as they all have different gameplay benefits and to be honest, none of the shrines fit the Japanese theme well, so some work will be required to make them look at least a little bit less out of place anyway. One of the most important things to do right when building a temple is placing lights. It's not really that hard. I just try to create some contrast, have some fun with lights and shadows. In this structure it should work quite well due to the complicated internal geometry provided by all the beams. I've placed all of my lights well in front of the altar, two on the sides and most importantly one above, in front of Derketo's statue. It works almost like a spotlight and makes the sun carried by the goddess between her horns shine brightly when seen from the ground floor. This effect is even more prominent due to the contrast of the deep shadows behind the altar. Finally, I've added some subtle details here and there. I've placed some offerings at the feet of the statue, 
A goblet of wine and fruit feel like a proper sustenance for a fertility goddess, while incense is basically mandatory on all kinds of temples. As for the two minions of the goddess, I've placed some candles at their feet in a random pattern. The black candles and white flames perfectly mimicking the color scheme of the statues, while the random placement seems to suggest that they were put there by worshippers in some personal ritual. Of course, temple or not, the outer wall is still a part of the battlement, hence all the weapon racks. The rest of the castle follows the same design philosophy as the rooms I've shown you. My recommendation is, as always, to only furnish the parts you're actually going to use so that you won't waste resources and time. Also, if you're just discovering the fascinating past of Japan, I'd like to recommend a book for you. It's called Hagakure by Tsune Tomo Yamamoto, also sometimes called the Book of the Samurai. In the next part, we'll be back in Europe, building a concentric castle. Cheers!